Can you hear that? That's your heartbeat. It's where everything starts. It's about 68 beats per minute. Listen closely. You hear it? You feel that? Isn't it exciting? Really get into it. That's time. This is a metronome. This is what musicians use to keep time. Keep track of timing, steady timing. We need to have a relationship to time. I'm going to play along. Isn't that great? Doesn't that feel awesome? <laughs> Nothing makes you want to dance like grandma's old upside down clock. That's what I've found. But I really think that music is found in between these ticks and tocks of the musical clock. Let's see. Not the most exciting song, but this metronome here he helps us keep time as musicians, and in life, we need to have a track of time. We need to know when to do things at the same time. But I'm going to stop it now, as beautiful as it is. Is it the same to do everything at the same time? I mean, eventually, if I hadn't stopped this, this metronome would have run out of juice, would have stopped ticking, just like we will. And at the end of the day, as we wind down, at the end of our lives, Will we look back and look at all the events that happen on time, according to the clock? Do we look back and, and, and remember the things that happen between the ticks and tocks of the clock in the right timing? Did we have our earbuds wedged so far up our ear holes our whole lives that we only heard our own song, our own music? Or did we listen to the music around us? Did we really pay attention to the world around us? Time is one thing, but for me as a musician, and as a human, timing is of the presence. Are we present in each moment? Now, I'm not just a musician that plays with other musicians. Uh, I am a musician, by the way, if you, the keyboard didn't give it away. I'm a musician that plays with comedians. I collaborate with comedians. I, don't get your hopes up, I'm not the comedian. So uh, <laughs> the laughter may be muted, but I am kind of the Magician's assistant lady, you know, that, that has the blanket and the doves fly out. Also, no doves today, so don't be alarmed. Uh, I assist the comedian in their comedy, musically. If I don't pay attention to timing, I blow a joke. There are no doves to be harmed, but I blow the comedian's joke. Everyone looks like a jerk. Nobody wins. I have to be so conscious of timing in comedy and in music. i found that for musicians and comedians, there are what we'll call three noble truths of being present in the right timing. The first noble truth is, ta-da, choosing to listen. Are we really listening to the world around us? Are we listening? Are we engaged in the activity of listening? It's a choice to listen. Are we just at that meeting or at that luncheon, tapping our foot, silently waiting for our moment to speak, our solo, as it were? Are we waiting? Everyone else is blabbing away, we're like, I got something great to say. Or are we listening? It's an action to listen. It's not just being quiet, waiting for our time. Now, I've been, uh, let me tell you, first of all, I am, a I am a musician that has worked extensively with two comedians, Steve Martin and Martin Short. See, that's me listening. That's me holding for applause in comedy. I don't want the applause, no. Their egos could use a little uh, correction. Steve Martin, so I've been working with Martin Short for almost 20 years. It's a long time. His comedy has a specific arc. I've learned how his comedy will go, how the stories will go. If I'm tinkling, you know, behind him very quietly. By the way, I got a, a, a college degree in music. No course in tinkling, by the way. Zero <laughs> course. But I tinkle behind his, I, very quietly, and I'm kind of painting a picture for his comedy. So the story kind of has a mood, right? I take the, the hands off if a punchline's going to come. It's a very specific little art that we have, and it's a little dance that we do. You shouldn't hear it happening. In fact, you shouldn't even really hear me playing, which is kind of sad if you study music your whole life to not be heard. 
But I am there to be felt. You should feel the balance of the comedy working, and you should notice the jokes, not notice me playing. It's tricky. Well, I was going to have to miss a performance with Martin Short and Steve Martin about a year ago. It's tricky because we have such a history together. Who's going to be able to fulfill this? Not to mention I wear a unitard, and who's going to fit in the unitard? But that's a different story. I found a pianist that would be perfect. He's a really great pianist, one of my heroes. He's also a really funny guy. So I thought, this is perfect. They'll get each other. They'll... So I, 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 we made a video of a show. I sent him a list. This is exactly where I start. This is exactly where I stop. You'll be great. When you hear this joke, do that. Well, it came to the day of the performance. I'm across the country there on the East Coast. I get a call on my phone. I know it's rehearsal time. It's from Marty Short. I go, oh boy, this, here it comes. I know what this means. He says, Jeff, do you play all the time? When I'm doing jokes, do you play all the time? Are you? He's playing all the time. I said, I don't, I don't play all the time. I, I, I gave him the notes of where to start. Well, he's playing all the time, and I hear the pianist in the background. I am not playing all the time. I'm playing exactly where you told me to play. I said, oh, okay, I get what this is. This is not about the times. This is about the timing. It's about the nuance of listening to one another, about doing that dance, allowing the other person to shine. It's unnatural, I think, as human beings, to not want to share all the time, to not want to solo, to not want to provide what we know all the time. But it's the best action, sometimes letting the other share, letting the other person share their knowledge, letting them shine. We might actually learn something from it, too. Choosing to listen. The second noble truth is reading the room. I should do the weatherman reading the room. <laughs> Who's around? Are we aware of our audience? I'm aware of all of you. Is our audience a bunch of kind of know-it-alls, type A people that all want to share their thing? Maybe that's the time to back off, right? Or is it, a, is, it, is it a group of people that are sponges waiting to hear what we have to share? That's our moment to step forward and share what we've got. We have to read the room. I'm not only a musician that plays with funny people, although most of the people I work with are pretty funny. I am a musician that works with other musicians, what we call a session musician. Now, to those of you that don't know what a session musician is, they're the people that you listen to on the radio, the, the famous people with faces, have a bunch of people with no names and no faces, well, we have both, but you know what I'm saying, that back them up and make them sound great. Hopefully, that makes their, sound, their song sound perfect. The, 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 you don't even notice us again, but you hear it, and you hear the song, and then that person looks great, and their song is exactly how you want it to sound. So usually how that works is we go into the studio, we hear a demo tape, or tape that shows you how old I am, we hear a demo, and, or they play us the song, and we all learn it. Okay, here's, here's the roadmap. A roadmap in music is just like a roadmap you'd use. Uh, it's a GPS of a song. Okay, you start with the intro, then you go to the verse, then you go to the chorus, and then here comes a bridge, just like a regular map. So we all learn it, and then the band kind of marches into the recording room, and we all learn the song. So there, oh, here, there's this song. Well, uh-oh, here's the problem. Everybody's playing the same song. But are we all playing the same thing? No, if I'm playing that, maybe the guitar player is going to listen back and go, oh, okay, so I'm going to play some, a different version of that, an arpeggio. We're all reading the room around us, seeing what provides the most harmony, what makes a bigger picture. It's kind of a puzzle, this song. We're all really acutely reading the room, seeing what needs to be here. Let me tell you, there have been times where I have played some tasteless ideas in the studio, and there, I call it the walk of shame. After you've recorded the song, you know, everyone plays their part, and if I, I say, woo, that was great. Then I walk into the, the, where we have to listen back to the song. I know that moment's coming, and here it, uh, it feels like in the operation game, if I touch the side of the thing and I get the wish, it's, it's the worst sound. Read the room. Do you need to play that thing, or is it time to just let everybody else speak? We're all letting each other paint this beautiful picture that becomes a complete puzzle, and the song hopefully sounds good, and the guy's got a hit record. Uh, still no names and no faces. The third noble truth is training to be ready. Now, what's the point of knowing your timing, being present in the right timing, if when your timing comes, you're not ready for it? We all have to be ready. Now, how, here's another thing. Who's to say that we have a warning that our time is coming? Our time's approach, this moment that's going to change your life, is on its way. Almost zero times has that happened for me. Most of the crucial turning points in my life have come as complete surprises. And if I don't train like I would for a marathon, I mean, we know a marathon's coming, 
right? So we train for it. I, I haven't done it, but I, from what I understand, that's what people do. Uh, we have to train for being ready for these surprise moments. How does that work? Well, you take all, all of the things you're passionate about, all of the things that, that, that make you who you are as a professional, as a human, and you take your life and you work on those things. Uh, let me tell you a story. I, about 20 years ago, I was on tour in Europe. I was a rocker in Europe. I dyed my hair blue. I felt good. I got home and discovered there's an audition for a talk show house band. <laughs> Dream come true, I get to stay home, I get to have a steady job. Steady jobs in music are hard to come by. So they said the audition is in a half hour. Okay, so I got, I got in the car, I put a hat on because of the blue hair, and I raced over to the audition. And let me tell you, I had spent my whole career up to that point training. I had met every musician in, in, in town. I had studied how they play. I let them study how I play. I, I showed up. I let them know, okay, I'm available for this, this, I'm good at this and this, and we all knew one another. I had also trained by, unknowingly, I was watching VHS tapes of comedy from when I was a kid. You know, with the bad tracking where it's like warbly, and I, I watched SCTV and Saturday Night Live. Tons of it. I walked into that door, and I had trained because the audition was for Martin Short, his talk show, and I knew all of the band because I had met so many people. They all appeared to be happy to see me, I think. They were smiling and we, 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 we high-fived and we played music and then Martin Short's brother, Michael, said, do you know this character? He doesn't speak like that, but it's bad. He said, do you know? I said, I know all the characters. Jackie Rogers. I was, I was like, it was a party time in there. I got the gig. Uh, they did ask to see the blue hair afterwards, but somehow I got it anyway. I was trained for that moment. Timing is about being present for every situation, every surprise. Now, as you can see, the clock is ticking. We have a choice. Do we pay attention to every tick and talk of the clock? Or do we listen? Are we ready? for the right timing, because there's music in between every click if you listen closely. It's right there in plain sight. Listen for the music around you, because there can be beautiful music all around if you choose to be present in the right timing. Thank you so much.